So in our society, we have a uh, quite a number of ways in which we tend to break down society into different layers, different social layers. And one of the ways that we do that is to break up society into different classes. So we can break society up into the lower class, which basically consists of a lot of people who do a lot of manual work, laborious work, often low paid jobs. And then we have what's called the middle class. So these are better paying jobs, often involving a lot of um, professionals. And right at the top, we have the upper class. So these tend to be um, very wealthy businessmen, heads of industry, people with a lot of family wealth that uh, occupy very prominent positions. And these are called the upper class. And one of the things that we know is that your different class position often correlates to the amount of um, income, the amount of income that you get from your job. So I guess one of the things that we think about when we think about these different uh, social positions is that can we actually have um, movement? So can an individual actually move around? And the answer is yes. An individual can in fact move around these different social positions. And there's various ways an individual can move. The first way I want to mention is an individual can move horizontally. That's to say an individual can move within the same class. So take, uh, take our gentleman with the blue hair in the middle. So if he works as an accountant in one accounting company, if he switches job to a different accounting company, but he stays at the same level, he's essentially um, experiencing horizontal movement. That's to say that he's not either going up in terms of the social positioning, and he's not going down in terms of social positioning. However, he could experience something called vertical movement, which is either a move up or a move down the social hierarchy. An example of this would be if he was, for example, um, a manager at a restaurant. And should he get a promotion and then become the CEO of a fast food restaurant, then he would then perhaps move into a higher, um, higher sphere. However, should he get a demotion, um, should he experience troubles at work and then get bumped down to just um, serving food and going on minimum wage, he may actually fall down from his middle class, reasonably well-paid job into the lower working class. And in that case, he would experience downward social movement, downward social mobility. So as we could see, as we discuss social mobility, we can have horizontal movement and vertical movement, as we have described here. There are various different types of social constructs that allow for different levels of social mobility. Historically, some societies have had what's been called the caste system. And in the caste system, there has been um, very, very, very little um, social mobility. And you may ask why, because in the caste system, your role in life is really determined almost entirely by your background, essentially to what position you're born and to, to who you are married to. So if we look at um, the hierarchy, the first, the caste hierarchy, you're really limited to the social group to which you're born, regardless of your actual aptitude and achievements. What that, what that does often uh, provide is a large amount of social stability because the social structures um, often do not change. People's social position doesn't change throughout their life. So they remain in the same social situation with the same social network. The most um, common historic example of the caste system was the Hindu caste system, which was uh, historically outlawed, but some say still practiced to some uh, degree informally today. Secondly, we go on to what's called the class system. And this tends to operate in many countries today, where we have the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class. And the class system is um, a step away from the caste system because it allows for a degree of social mobility. It is, in fact, a combination of a person's background alongside their ability. It recognizes somebody's ability in terms of allowing them to go up or even down the social ladder. But what that actually results in, that results in less social stability compared to the caste system. People can really change the so their social positioning throughout their life, often by means of uh, education, for example. 
Now, finally, I want to uh, raise the concept of uh, a rather idealized concept of the meritocracy. And what a meritocracy is, is a concept that people achieve their social position based on their um, ability and achievements, and solely based on their ability and achievements. So in a meritocracy, someone's position is not really determined by, someone's position is not really determined by their place of birth, their parental background. So this is a highly idealized uh, state that isn't really operating anywhere in the world. Some people say the United States may be termed a meritocracy. But in an ideal meritocracy, what we have is actually extreme social mobility. People are continuously going up and down depending on their most recent level of performance and achievement. So really now, instead of background, we are basically purely focused on um, ability and their achievement. As you can imagine, there uh, may not be as much social stability because their relative kind of the background organization of families and social groups may be much less stable than the caste system and the class system and, and the purest form of a meritocracy. So as we can see here, in a meritocracy, we have the greatest degree of upward and downward social mobility compared to the caste and class system.